I pulled up with an engine and a house fire, smoke was rolling out the back, and I uh, had a public safety officer right behind me. I stretched the line, suited up, scouted up, pulled an electrical cord line for lights, and he still hadn't had his gear on yet. They found the child a day or two later underneath the rubble in the middle of the house after it collapsed on top of him under the stairwell. Police officers were very apprehensive. Uh, their morale, uh, it varied from, I think, officer to officer. A lot of them, uh, once they found out what was truly involved, uh, didn't really want to do it. We count on firefighters to save lives and protect property. But now, some misguided politicians think they can combine the time-critical functions of fire and emergency medical services with the crime-fighting role of police officers. The creation is a hybrid public safety officer, or PSO. When you get on a situation, we are there for the law enforcement area, they're there for the life-saving area. It's just too much for one person to do. It's too much responsibility for one person to hold. In a public safety department where it's police, fire, and EMS, you're asking that individual to be proficient in all three disciplines of police, fire, and emergency medical services. When a career fire department shows up, they jump off the engine with their air pack on, gear on, ready to go. When a public safety department shows up, they show up with usually one guy driving an engine and a couple coming on police cars. The equipment that I wear on a daily basis that I'm wearing right now, ballistic vest, gun belt, all that stuff, that's for a police officer. What is the plan for all of that? You start uh, stripping down in the middle of the uh, parking lot, you go to the back of the trunk of your car, you take off your gun belt, take off your um, bulletproof vest. That takes them a lot longer. They're never ready to work when they arrive on the scene. Whether attacking a fire, rescuing trapped victims, or treating serious medical conditions, the effort requires skill and coordinated decision-making among all responders. To fight a fire and to do most of the things that we uh, attempt to do for the public uh, requires a tremendous amount of teamwork. And I think that people arriving on the scene that aren't even prepared or dressed uh, for the situation and, and not familiar with the crews presents a safety hazard that uh, I would not be in favor of. You're putting the public at risk because if you don't have a full crew showing up together to do the job, you're talking, you know, delay in, in time, seconds, minutes, uh, and, and longer. The result of not attacking a fire early can be devastating, as fires typically double in size every two minutes. This rapid growth also increases the risk to civilians who may be trapped and for responders who must engage in rescue and suppression. What ends up happening is people lose their lives and property burns down in a very trivial small fire quickly grows into something catastrophic. Having the right training for emergency medical response and patient care is critical a fact often overlooked by those advocating a change to public safety officers. The public safety director who's trying to implement it or the, the police chief who's trying to get public safety going will train his people as medical first responders, which is basically a step above first aid. They can put a Band-Aid on, they can, you know, splint some fractures, and he might train 30 of those people, um, but he will eliminate 15 paramedics. A paramedic can See, see and recognize that you're actually having a heart attack and get the cardiac team that can stop that heart attack. Uh, paramedics can defibrillate, uh, innovate, uh, push cardiac medications. Optimum response time for both fire and medical emergencies is four to six minutes. This allows responders to intervene to stop the emergency in eight minutes or less, which is the maximum intervention time to prevent brain death in a cardiac arrest or to prevent flashover in a room and contents fire. The capability to have the right number of responders ready to work at a moment's notice can be lost in a cost-cutting model. Florida police says that uh, we don't need anybody for traffic detail. Lay somebody down here with some fire gear. The personnel on the traffic has the fire gear, have, have them to um, change to their fire gear. Officer Forbes really has his boots and pants. 
He has one officer on a low jack and one on a robbery detail. As soon as he gets uh, personnel available, he'll send to that location. When the elected officials look at this from a financial situation only, they usually make decisions that uh, are not really in the best interest sometimes of the public safety. And that response time for fire and EMS is crucial. That four to six minute response is crucial. You need people. We would like to have somebody on the scene at about the four minute mark anywhere in our city. And further, we would like to put 16 to 20 firefighters on the fire ground in a, probably a four to eight minute window. In the consolidated department in our area, the most they're gonna have on duty at any one time is about six to 10 people. The system has proven to be more costly in most cases. It's proven to um, greatly um, degrade the level of fire service that the, the community provides. In reality, in a fire department, you're only as good as your training division. And it's not just sporadic training, it's daily training. You've got to take all the people in the fire site and train them to be police officers. That costs money. And then you've got to take all the police and train them on the fire site. It doesn't work. It looks good on paper, but it doesn't work. The value of the ongoing and regimented training required of firefighters and paramedics is that it helps them to resolve lengthy and complex situations, as is the nature of fire and medical emergencies. This concept can be at odds with the training and skills police use for crime fighting. You come up to a major car accident with entrapment. Who handles traffic control? Who handles the DUI arrest for a, a drunk driver? Who handles the medical treatment? Who handles the extrication? Who handles the, the fuel spill on the ground? There's so many roles to play, and that role becomes greatly confused. What do we handle first? What do we prioritize? They say it puts more firefighters on the scene if there's a public safety department, and, and in turn it really doesn't because police officers do police officer work first, then they become firefighters second. If I respond as a, as a medic to a person down and they're bleeding, I treat them. If they were shot, the police officer has to look at it as a crime scene and you don't really move the person. Those few seconds could mean the life of that person. Residents typically will experience a, an emergency situation once in their lifetime, a situation which require a police, fire, EMS response. When that happens, they expect you to be there as quick as possible and provide a very effective system to handle their emergency. That's not always the case in a public safety system. The bottom line is if you don't have the resources there, those jobs don't get done. And when those jobs don't get done, ultimately it takes longer to stabilize that incident, but there's also more property loss. It means longer response times. It means less training. It means these individuals are required to do more with less. It doesn't pay. The cost is too great. For firefighters, public safety is saving lives, protecting property, and being prepared to respond quickly and efficiently to fires, medical emergencies, hazardous materials incidents, and multi-casualty disasters. For police officers, it is apprehending and transporting criminals and maintaining public order. Two very different roles that must be kept separate to function properly, and yet must work in concert to keep our communities safe.